Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Long Island Matchmaker Show with Maureen Tara Nelson Yay. of MTN Matchmaking. <laughs> I'm Lauren DeFranco. And Maureen, if you don't know by now, is Long Island's only executive level certified matchmaker. Maureen, great to see you as always. You're looking beautiful today, I might say. Oh, thank you so much. I'm so happy to see you again. I love our show every week. And I have a lot of friends now that are calling me up saying that they are listening to our show and they're saying, who is that Laura? Defra- <laughs> Laura DeFranco, she is amazing. I said, yep, yep. Flattery will get you everywhere. Yep. So- she's on ABC and now she's here with me. Form- former news correspondent yes. for ABC, WABC. Yep. Um, so we want to tell you about Maureen because there's no other service that has an office on Long Island where you're actually meeting with the owner to find love who has been in the business for 20 years, the business of finding love. Correct, Maureen? Yes. Boy, that does make me feel old saying that out loud. But <laughs> this year really is a very, it's one of the happiest years of matchmaking, being doing this for 20 years, and also post-pandemic, now we have learned a whole new way of helping people find love. And I do so also whether someone's a client or not, Mm -hmm. through the radio show here, by giving dating advice, answering dating questions. So thank you, everyone who's been emailing in your dating questions and continue to do so at Maureen at mtnmatchmaking.com. Well, Maureen is a dating coach, and yes. so every week we yes. go through a list of questions, and she doesn't see them. I have no idea, and I'm really afraid <laughs> every week because, you know, it would be embarrassing if it's something that I would ever have to say. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> mm-hmm. But I've never seen you get stumped no. on a matchmaking no, no, question. No, never yet, but it's always, you know, in the back of my head, one day it could happen. <laughs> <laughs> we could throw a curveball at you that you don't know. Yes. You've so seen ev- it all, though, right? Everybody, give me softball. Balls, as I like to call them. <laughs> okay, well, this yes, is I've a, heard it all. This yes. is a hard ball, but I think oh, you boy. could. I think you could answer it. Okay. What is your biggest accomplishment from matchmaking, from oh, all the twenty years of experience that you have? Well, I am blessed with having over a thousand success stories. Wow. And of course, when you've made thousands of people successful in finding love, you be. I love all of my clients. We have 2,000 clients. I love all of them. There usually are always a few favorites that, you know, sign up every month, you know, out of all the people that sign up every month. Some of them are just so extra extraordinary that Mm -hmm. you just can't help not to love them. So I would say the biggest and the proudest moment for me was when one of our favorite couples asked me, would I become a wedding officiant and marry them? Oh, wow. And, of course, my first reaction was going to be, oh, no, I can't do that. I'm too busy. Mm -hmm. Really? Mm -hmm. You know, I love you to death, but, oh, yeah, sorry. I could never go through the training, get, you know, the certification of it. But I actually did. So what did you have to become, a justice of the peace? Or um, No, it's a certified wedding officiant. Oh, okay. So I did that, and I married our favorite couple, and my sister came with me to the wedding, and my sister has been on and off working with me as mm-hmm. well as the rest of my family, as you know. Right, you have a family-run business. She, she has retired three times, and we keep trying to get her back for the fourth time. She's not having it, but she came with me to the wedding. My sister comes with me to big, um, say, events if we win something, mm-hmm. as I've mentioned to you before. So it's kind of our tradition, but... It was just such a great, great feeling to know that this couple that we love is now getting married. and You're part I, of it. Yes. I, I, words cannot describe it. That is a great accomplishment. Yes. Thank you. And I would huh. want to say people probably out there are wondering how you do find success with love, with 
complete strangers, really, if you think about it. You're interviewing people, and I'm sure your interviewing process is extensive, but how yes, do you match yes, people yes. up and know that it will be a success? That is actually a great question. Someone wrote that in, or did you just Well, that was my question. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it kind of looked like it was something that you were thinking. <laughs> So it's funny you said that because prior to doing this for 20 years, I'm a former pharmaceutical rep. Many people have heard me say that. It was the best training ever to become a matchmaker. And they taught us all about human behavior because we had to assess a doctor's personality in five minutes because we only had seven minutes with them. So I was blessed to have learned those techniques on how to get to know someone's personality very quickly. Mm -hmm. So my interviews were always an hour in person, which I'm going back to in-person interviews in the Melville office, by the way. It's almost like half the amount of people want to be in Melville seeing me face to face, whereas mm -hmm. the other half are perfectly happy being virtual. home and doing it virtually. And by the way, that does take me longer. Mm -hmm. just so but that's good that. for people to know. If you do want to contact Maureen, you can either do so virtually or mm -hmm. you can go to the office now because a lot of yes. people are more comfortable. A lot of people have yes. been vaccinated. A lot of people feel that they want to be back in society. Yes. And I think there's something about the in-person interview. Is. Again, it's so much easier for me. But also, a lot of times my own clients They'll be surprised when I make them successful super fast mm -hmm. because my motto is what takes you two years on the outside world would take me six months because I'm doing the screening process, but I'm also making sure everyone is compatible in three ways and you have to be compatible and have chemistry for a relationship to work and last. I can't do chemistry. Mm -hmm. But yet on the outside world, when people are dating, you can't do compatibility right away because you have to trust that what that person is telling you is the truth. What are the three uh, ways again? My three ways, which I've recently had a fourth way too, but mm. the first is part of someone's homework. What are their five best qualities, which they tell me? Then the second part is my assessment of what they're saying. Now those two have to match. Mm -hmm. If they don't, and I've said this before, that person is a liar. <laughs> because I trust my intuition more than I do a person that I'm meeting or seeing for the first time in my life. So I don't take a chance with my clients. I do not accept everyone. Everyone has to pass a screening process. And that person who I believe is a liar is out. Now the third part is when we're done. And I know within within 15 minutes for sure, mm -hmm. if I can help someone. Mm -hmm. If I can, great, we continue the interview, and at the end I give them the choices, I have five different programs, and then I do a personality test on them right after. Okay, so that's something, again, I learned in my pharmaceutical days. But uh, to answer your question, it is really funny because my clients will say to me, well, you only met me or you only got to know me for two hours. This is what I was trained to mm -hmm. do. This so, is what you do for a living. And I never, you've never heard me say I'm great at a lot of things. Nope. Being a <laughs> mother, true. matchmaker. That's it. Anything that is else? true. Talk to me like I'm five. And I'm fine with that. <laughs> so that's, that's how I do it, by getting to know everyone's personality, which does also, I think, have to do with a person's intuition. Someone who is very intuitive, I want them to work with me. Mm -hmm. I want to hire that person because that's something that you really can't teach someone. They either have it or they don't. Mm -hmm. So now I'm including that in on my fourth area of compatibility. So Maureen's intuition. Yes. And again, always so, listen to your intuition, right? Yeah. So again, just real quickly, when you're dating someone, then you will just have to go out a few times to see if you have chemistry. That's it. Mm -hmm. So think of how much easier that is because on the outside world, it takes about six months to get to know that person's true personality, their true intentions, mm -hmm. and the areas of our screening process if they would have passed or not. Statistically, only 1% of people using Internet sites pass this screening process. 
crazy. Okay, so as a journalist, I'm going to stray from the questions for just a few minutes sure. because we all know what the headlines have been this week yes. with heartbreaking, heartbreaking Gabby Petito. And it appears that she was in an abusive relationship. So as yes. Maureen, as a dating coach, yes. we see a lot of situations where young women particularly young women, get into situations where they, where they are controlled mm -hmm. and they don't really even realize that they're in a controlling, abusive relationship. Yes. Do you meet clients that come to you and say, you know, it's all me, it's my fault, but we're fighting all the time? Or what do you say to those people? The funny thing is you're right on target with exactly what you said. The person that is being abused and the person that is with the narcissist will question themselves. Mm -hmm. That's true. Whereas opposites attract, but they're the worst things for us. So always remember that. So if someone, and usually you say men, but there are, of course, controlling and narcissistic women. Mm -hmm. So I can spot that within five minutes. There are certain things that a person will do or say, and then I know follow-up questions to bring that out. That person is done in five minutes. No explanation needed. I will not ever have a narcissist or someone controlling mm -hmm. working in or in my program. But in this particular case, you see she was the one that was feeling she's doing something wrong. Mm -hmm. Always. No. Now, the narcissist is never their fault. Mm -hmm. And that's scary. So if you know someone that you believe is in this type of relationship, because we all do, but as friends or even family members, we're afraid to bring that up to our friends mm -hmm. and family because it's difficult, it's uncomfortable. And it's talking about one's vulnerability yes. and what, one person perceives as a relationship and the outside people who love you see it as yes. something destructive. Yes. And it's, it is easier for other people to see it. And I could tell you with my 20 years of matchmaking people, when you see that in a couple, it is always going to be much worse for that person, what they're living mm -hmm. than what you see, because what narcissists do is they pretend to the outside world how wonderful they are, mm -hmm. how perfect they They're very are. charming. Very, very overly charming, in fact. Mm -hmm. But as they say, you never know what goes on behind closed doors. That's that person now living with a narcissist. It is literally living in hell. And mm -hmm. one story that I just... to. If you're in a relationship like this and something like this happens, just know this is a red flag that in front of everyone, your husband is amazing. Everyone is telling you, wow, he's great. I love him. You're so lucky. Mm -hmm. But then when you're alone, if he belittles you, if he is not happy with your success, if he is angry all the time, if he knocks you down, if he yells and screams or even curses, those are the red flags that you do not ever put up with that. And mm -hmm. you have to tell a friend. And one time that actually happened where I was in the relationship and in the kitchen and the side door was open. And so my ex was yelling and screaming you know, no one ever saw that side of him. Mm -hmm. Never. Mm -hmm. They saw the charming, good-looking man. But the window was open and the side door was open. And what he didn't see was our neighbor walking right across on the sidewalk. And I have to tell you, that gave me power and it made me feel safe mm -hmm. because someone else heard it. Right. Because they're usually so good that no one will even believe you. So if you're ever in that situation, please tell someone. And if you see someone in that relationship or you think it, bring it up to them and let them know this is a safe place to discuss this. You're not going to tell their secrets. Right. Because, you know, you look at this case and there are so many what ifs. What if yes. 
the cops or the police had brought him into custody or mm -hmm. at least separated them in some significant kind of way where she wasn't left to her own devices in a, her van. But at any rate, we all know someone who's been in a situation yes. of domestic violence. It's very common. We've all had our own personal experiences yes. with controlling Most abusive behavior, yes. narcissism. And um, it's really hard to get out of that. And we all understand that. But you, you need have therapy to tell. therapy also. Mm -hmm. Please. I am such a huge believer as in therapy, mm -hmm. again, from being a former pharmaceutical rep. So everyone should be going to therapy at least For sure. you know try it out and see and if say if you're with someone and they're adverse to going to a therapist that's a red flag too right because anyone that's not open minded enough to go and just check it out they're actually afraid oh wow that therapist is going to see through me they'll see through something mm -hmm. so they're hiding something Red flag. They don't want to be exposed. Exactly. And they will be exposed. Through well, therapy. this is why, again, we'll, we'll look at the positive angle to this, mm -hmm. that Maureen and MTN matchmaking filters out yeah. some of those people who could be narcissistic and yeah. abusive, which you will find on the Internet by the dozens, oh, of course, <laughs> by the hundreds. They, they see the TV commercial. They hear the radio show. They see whatever. And they call all the time. And I could usually ask them questions if I'm lucky enough to do the pre-screening or if one of my team members does the pre-screening and I then get them within five minutes, I hear and I see the signs. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you, I have no problem either kicking someone out of the program, mm -hmm. God forbid, Amen. or not accepting someone. And I've said many times, Sorry, you're just too controlling, <laughs> or I believe you present with signs of narcissism. I don't feel comfortable working with you. After 20 years, I could say anything to mm -hmm. anyone, and I'm not afraid. No, Maureen because, doesn't do business with narcissists. No. I know that. And with my 2,000 clients, they are entrusting me. They are paying me to do the screening process, and you can damn well believe I will always do that screening process, no matter what. Okay, so we'll get back to some of the questions. Yes. What are your goals for the future of your business? What do you see for the future? My goals would be to help other matchmakers or other business owners learn how I do what I do because my program is extremely different than my colleagues. I love my colleagues. Mm -hmm. Always, if you're going to go to a matchmaker, and it's in Nebraska or anywhere. And it's even international now. It's huge in Asia. But make sure that person is certified because then they're going through the same rules and regulations as a matchmaker should be doing rather than someone saying, oh, yeah, I matched up all my friends in high school. And, you know, I know how to interact and meet people. Mm -hmm. No, that does not make a matchmaker. Right. Okay. So. You're the real deal. Yes. And so one day I just have certain goals that are here right now as far as Long Island that everyone that lives on Long Island, because I'm from here, my goal is that everyone knows there is a matchmaker here and a dating coach that will be able to do the screening process for you, not take on everyone. Make sure you're compatible so that all you have to do is to make sure you have chemistry. Mm -hmm. So once everybody that's single knows that, okay, so mm -hmm. that's a big leap. That's huge. So once everyone knows that, then I know I can pass the reins to other people that I will teach my method of hand-selected matches, mm -hmm. not using a computer, not using an algorithm, also having both parties pay, I don't accept database people, mm -hmm. like my colleagues. Again, love them to death. I just do not believe in taking on database people because they're never going to be as committed as a person paying the mm -hmm. money for this. So I want to teach others and to carry it on 
with the same values and integrity that I wake up every day and do my best to have. Well, that leads me to um, an event coming up. Yes. <laughs> oh. The 50... Yes. Yes. Own over fair. That's today, Sunday. Yes. Oh, it is this Sunday. Yes. The okay. 26. So, what will you be discussing during your presentation? And tell us about the fair and the highlights, and what yes. should people expect? And yes. can they come and yes. enjoy all of the benefits of this? So, the event is the 50 over fair. They do it every year. It is in Westbury, where the old Fortune Offs used to be, that mm -hmm. Source Mall. All right. So, it's a great venue. Every year I do a seminar. This year's seminar is helping improve your love and sex life after 50. Then I'm hosting, as I do every year, a singles lounge. Oh, nice. Plus we're having a booth, of course, and we're, giving, we're having a raffle, and we can give out information on what we do, of course. Mm -hmm. But... Everyone should come because I believe it's only five dollars. But if you wow, go that's on, a bargain. yeah, five dollars, you might as well come. I, I think there's over fifty vendors. There's a ton of other seminars as well. Of course, none of them as exciting as MTM. my my topic of you know love and sex, sex after fifty. But it is a great time for everyone and. In my social media, Facebook, MTN Matchmaking, I do believe you can go there and there will be a coupon that it is for two free tickets. So go to my social media, like the page, and just print up that ticket so you can get in for free with a friend. And we will have the Singles Lounge. I will be, as much as I can, walking around, talking to people, getting to know them, mm -hmm. and introducing people if I can. It's like a singles event, and you never know who you could you meet at know. one of these yes. events. It could yes. be your lucky day. It could be. <laughs> could be. Uh, this leads us to another question. Okay. What is the biggest obstacle for people dating over 50? So share a little bit of insight with us as to what's going to be some of the secrets unfolding at this event. Okay, well, the biggest obstacle once someone turns 50 is staying realistic. Mm -hmm. And a good rule of thumb is to be happy with yourself the way you are now. And if there are certain things you want to improve, because we all want to improve in some areas, all of us. So take this time now, especially with the fall. The fall is a perfect time to make changes in your lives and never be afraid to take on change change is scary everybody knows that but mm -hmm. change is also always good definitely yeah so always try to improve yourself and be the best that you can be and at your age i mean yes. you know it doesn't say that life ends after 50 life can begin after 50 correct yeah of course so, but just don't make the common mistakes that people say if you're divorced, if you get divorced and now you are, or widowed, God forbid, and you're re-entering the dating world 50 plus, in your mind subconsciously, it is easier to still think of yourself, how you looked and how you felt back when you were 25 or 30. Right. You cannot do that. It's not going to work, but that is the biggest obstacle I see with people coming into me being 50 plus, and they'll say something like, oh, that person isn't athletic enough. I love to ski. Oh, really? <laughs> okay, great. So where'd you go skiing this past winter? Oh, yeah, I haven't gone for years. <laughs> what? And it happens all the time. Mm -hmm. You're not that same person, but there's a good thing in that. You're a better person. You're wiser. You're smarter. You're funnier. You know not to make the same mistakes that you did when you were so young. So you have to embrace your age mm -hmm. and really be proud of the person that you have become and be realistic. If someone's realistic, you will be able to be successful. If you're still thinking that you deserve someone as gorgeous as your wife was when you first married her, 40 years ago, that is not realistic. Now, 
if you're wealthy, could you find a gold digger on the internet or perhaps someplace else if you pay enough money? Yes, but that is not real. So if you're looking for real love, and I hope you are, that's what I live for every day. My boys, 24 and 26, Brendan and Ryan, and helping people find love. So just be positive, embrace your age, be realistic. And well, what do you call that mirror? You say people look yes. in the magic mirror. So this is a big problem that what I just described as that person <laughs> that now is 40 years older, they'll look in the mirror. Now, if I look in the mirror, I could tell you how many pounds I want to lose from the pandemic or from my back surgery. Mm -hmm. I could tell you all my laugh lines that I have from laughing. I could tell you anything about myself that I still am working on. Right. And that's fine. Mm -hmm. I love myself. Everyone needs to love yourself. You, no one can love you unless you love yourself, obviously. But there are some people that look at that same mirror, and instead of seeing what is actually there, they see the person they were 40 years ago mm -hmm when they got married the first time. Through rose-colored so, glasses, <laughs> goggles. So, so what I goggles. say is, I want that magic mirror. How <laughs> much is it? Where'd you buy that magic mirror? I need one of those. So if, you, if anyone ever tells you, hey, you're being re unrealistic, or if I've ever said to you, which believe me, I say it out of love, okay, look, you need to be realistic, then you know you're using a magic mirror, and there is no such thing as that magic mirror. So. Right. And you have to be realistic in yes. your goals of dating. Of course. And you can't just go by superficial no. looks. No. You have to. Because anything can happen. That person who is so hot and beautiful, God forbid anything can happen, and the next day can be totally different. Do you think you're going to love that person less because of it? No, no and, and you if you're in a marriage, people do change. Their looks change over time. That's something that yes. we have to deal with yes. realistically anyway. So the key is to be realistic. And I just want to touch upon one more thing, um, again, with domestic violence, yes. because this was just a heartbreaking week yes. for the country. Yes. We need to understand that if you're in a relationship, what are some of the warning signs, Maureen? I like to just generalize and say there's, you know, the 80-20 rule that it works with really anything. Mm -hmm. If you're in a relationship, you should be happy at least 80% of the time. Mm. If you're not, then start questioning that. Or if every day when you wake up and you're with someone, if that person ever makes you feel bad about yourself for anything, huge red flag, get out immediately. It's called gaslighting. Yes. A lot of uh, yep. toxic relationships involve gaslighting, the behavior where that partner makes you feel like mm -hmm. you're going crazy mm -hmm. and you're not. And I think we've all experienced yes. it. Yes. In fact, if you're a very kind, loving person, you have to be extra careful because, again, what I said, opposites attract, but they're the worst things for us. So when you are so kind and loving, obviously the opposite of that is a narcissist. And a narcissist could spot you across the mm -hmm. room somewhere by watching your behavior being extra kind to someone. Mm -hmm. They that, see your vulnerability. Yep. That narcissist now knows they have to get that person because they target a person that is extra loving because they can control you. So what they do is they will put you up on a pedestal so high, so fast, so quickly that you are saying in the beginning, oh, my God, this is the greatest feeling mm -hmm. in the world. I've never felt this great before. If ever that happens to you, red flag, because that's in the movies. That's not real. Right. And they will bring you down as fast as they bring you up. Once they feel that you love them, that's when they will knock you down off that pedestal. And now you're left to think, wait a minute, what did I do wrong? Mm -hmm. How did I change? Did I gain weight? Did I do this? No, you didn't change. That person is now showing their true colors. So just never go with someone that in the beginning is over the top because anything extreme is never good. So slow and steady, getting to know the person, taking time, and making sure that just like you're trying to make them feel good, 
They should be trying to make you feel good. And again, that's why calling Maureen, calling MTN Matchmaking, that will help you weed out a lot of the potential problems and a lot of the people who are out there trying to put one over on you. I think we are out of time. So Maureen. Thank you so much. This was so fun. Yes. Thank you, everyone, for listening. I hope to see everyone 50 plus at the 50 plus fair. On Sunday. And I'm Lauren DeFranco. And have a great weekend and and enjoy your day. Yep. And give me a call at 1-888-31-MATCH. And we will take great care of you. Thanks. Thanks. Bye.